nightmare, is there a nightmare, Jenny? These festive lattes and hot chocolates, they taste so good. I, I'm, Trish, I'm sure they do, but it brings me to a really good point, and you're very lucky, very lucky I've got an opinion on it. <laughs> oh, okay. What's the point? The, the, what's the point? Well, it's understanding that any change we want anybody to make comes from within first. I'm sorry, but it does. And so food and drink and sugar um, are one of the ways us humans numb ourselves from our feelings. And so if oh, you on, want... Hold on, hold on. Let, just, let me sit back. You're going to get deep on me. I'm gonna... You're going to get deep on me, <laughs> I Jenny. thought we'd start really light, actually, <laughs> Trish. Here we go. <laughs> so we as humans numb ourselves because we can. We, we cannot deal with... And we aren't taught to deal with the feelings that we have. So we eat our feelings, we drink our feelings, we shop our feelings, we talk our feelings, we sit on our phones rather than deal with our feelings. See, but it's, it's easy, isn't it? I mean, look, if I can stuff my face with a donut and a hot chocolate with whipped cream, I am going to do that rather than think about the council tax bills. I'm doing it, Jen. And you're really welcome to. It's, is it working for you? And if it isn't way. working for you, then we would do something different. It's always looking at I'm just being truthful. You my, I'm just showing you my middle. You've got a beautiful spread. middle. It's gorgeous. It's lovely. It's human. Oh. It keeps all your organs in. So on a serious note, we should be listening to ourselves more than feeding our mouths. It would be, be having enough self-compassion to understand that there's more to it than whether there's sugar in it or not. Uh, Jenny Critch, though, see, she's deep because she's a sh you're a shaman. Yes, that's yes, it, I am. Uh, contemporary shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a shaman. <laughs> is it shaman or shaman? I think you can go both. Okay. <laughs> and what is that in layman's terms? Really, I it's a tool that helps people listen to that very silent place in within. It's it's not not that different from things like meditation. It is different. Yeah. And one of the exercises I do with people that helps them understand what I mean by that silent place within is if I ask you to sit there and not think okay, about do anything. Yeah, Give it a go. Yeah. Who are you? That's deep. I know. Oh, that's deep. I don't want to yeah. go there. Can I you don't... see that you cannot have anything that is you that isn't a thought about you? Oh, this is deep, Jenny. And in that silence is deep wisdom that is yours. These are things no one else is doing anything you can't do yourself. And, and you know, do people you know, do people come to see you when they're in crisis? How does it work? Uh, well, I teach people how to do the tool. So I teach people shamanic dreaming, and that's really because then my one of my biggest missions is that nobody's doing any of this stuff that you can't do for yourself. So you don't need me. You might need me to teach you the tool, but then off you go and you get to listen to your own inner wisdom. Uh, I want to listen to your inner wisdom when it comes to my cake. There's a bit oh, of cake. I know. Take, take a little bit there. <laughs> I've been baking furiously all yesterday. Uh, last year, it all went belly wrong or pink it's, tom. It looks amazing. <laughs> Although my grandma was the queen of cake. Oh, was she? Right, here we go. What's, what's your shaman instinct saying, Jenny? It's comparable to grandma's. Wow, we no, Trish. No, you are joking. Hold on no. a minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> You can pay me in cake. That's it. That's <laughs> wonderful. I feel really, really privileged. Thank you. Oh, Lordy. Uh, right, the voice you're hearing is Jenny Critchlow, who is our newspaper reviewer this morning, and my cake is similar to her grandma's. Uh, let's go to your first story. Ingre oh, ingredients for kindness in the Express. What's this? Well, it's actually the, uh, one of the stories that everyone's talking about this morning. Is it the, uh, the um, headline in the Daily Express, Extinguishing Hatred with His Kindness? Yes. This is about Jack Merritt's dad um, asking people not to use his death um, to fuel hatred. But it's one of the messages I, I try and spout about all the time, is that the, when people say, if you want to see change in the world, you have to be the change, it actually goes really deeply. So my best analogy is, if I gave you some cheese and some bread yeah. and some butter yeah. and asked me to make you that fruitcake, yes. would that be a stupid thing to do? No. Oh, I can. You could make me a good cheese sandwich. Yes. With that, those ingredients, you couldn't make me a free cake. No, I couldn't. If we want the change we say we want in the world, we have to put the right ingredients in. So if you meet hatred with hatred or pain with pain, you can only get the same thing at the end out of it. Mm. It doesn't work. I mean, I'm surprised. It's very moving what Jack Merritt's uh, father mm. said. You know, he'd be seething if he was alive, uh, you know, seeing how his story has yes. been played out by politicians who are using it as a political football and saying, you know, lock up these terrorists for life, and blah de blah mm -hmm. uh, And, you know, for a grieving father to come out with that, is, it is. It's astonishingly selfless. It's, it's true strength. And his son will be one of the, you know, change comes incrementally and comes through generations 
generations. And what we want is change now. And we want to do something immediately so we can all have change now. And that's not how the world works. And so this is a generation coming up that will bring more of the ingredients for the fruit cake than for the cheese sandwich. Okay. Well, I, I hope I could do both if you gave me the ingredients. <laughs> but I may need some time. Uh, on, a, on a more lighter note, let's look at your uh, positive Christmas in the Coftal. Uh, that's in the Coftal. And it's avoid a blue Christmas with some self-compassion and preparation. Um, and this is talking about avoiding the Christmas stress, which brings me to have an opinion about that too. Okay. Sorry, about that. No, no, um, It's understanding that stress is resisting what is. And so when we are doing something, even if it's writing a list, the stress comes from thinking about all the other things we have to do. Right. When we're only doing this one thing, and when we finish doing this one thing, we can do the next thing. That's the problem. You know, when we're all juggling, Jenny, we've all got to get the kids or the grandkids somewhere. Even if we haven't got kids, we've got to look after parents. If we haven't got parents, we've got to look after bills. It is so hard not to be stressed. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying that once we start to understand there's another way of looking at things. What, what is that way? Is that there is a point at which we understand that our minds, our thoughts are crazy. And they tell us stories and they create stresses that aren't there. One of my favourite lines is you can be doing the ironing and fall out with five different people before you finish the bath. Yes, that's true. That's true. And that is what we're doing in our heads all the time. Mm. And that is what I'm talking about when I talk about the inner, inner, inner silence of us, that bit that's very still, that you don't, that's you when you're not thinking. And that is never stressed. And so learning to be more in that place than in our crazy heads. Do you know, I think uh, two weeks with you in a house without my phone, I would be, the chi I would be so chilled, I'd be almost horizontal. I, oh, I, I don't know, you should ask my husband. Oh, 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 oh you stressed at home. I tell you what's causing a bit of stress this morning. Is this Mr. Men story. Have you heard this one, Jenny? I haven't seen that one, no. Well, basically, the Mr. Men... Um, well, that caused a bit of a stir uh, in Scotland in particular. Uh, there was this student, uh, all she's known as is Mrs. Judge, oh, yes, because she's married, 24, mm -hmm. uh, and she's accused the Mr. Men of mansplaining, so basically uh, be, being patronising to mm -hmm. women, basically. Uh, you've got, uh, let me have a look, you've got Mr. Clever, who's talking to Little Miss Curious, uh -huh. and she, in the book, she's asking him about the fourth bridge, because he's Mr. Men in Scotland, uh -huh. so well. and he, uh, Mr. Clever explained that it was named after the River Forth. Little Miss Curious thought for a moment, so what happened to the River First, the River Second, and the River Third, she asked Mr. Clever. Mr. Clever did a deep sigh. It's going to be a very long day. And Ooh. so... So, uh, Mrs. Judge, who's judging the book, the student, has said, this is terrible, this is awful, this is showing, you know, women in a bad light. And also, mm -hmm. she's pointed out that little Miss Curious has, has got blonde hair. Right, uh, so, I see. Um, she's not happy. <laughs> but, oh, isn't it just a book? Isn't it just a book? Well, it comes down again to how change happens. There's a lovely Chinese saying about uh, watching a tree that's been blown in one direction by the wind since it was a sapling, so it sits, sits at 45 degrees. You've actually got to blow very hard to get the tree to stand up and be in balance again. Okay. And so what we're looking at with this kind of thing, with, with everything, is that people are pushing very hard against something that has been seen as the norm. Uh -huh. And then change comes and balance occurs once in over generations. And then to be fair to the Mr. Men books, there are now Miss, Miss books. So uh, Roger Hargreaves, his son, took up the mantle and he's, mm -hmm. made, he's published loads of little Miss books. So as opposed to uh, Mr. Men books. So Hopefully there will be some change. Uh, the voice you're hearing, three minutes to eight, is the lovely Jenny Critchlow, who's your newspaper reviewer this morning. Uh, let's talk about this next story, um, a teacher in a wheelchair. What's this? Uh, this is a lovely little story from uh, The Sun about a teacher, Charlotte McCarthy, who was hit by an unlicensed lorry driver, and he's been found guilty, and she's shaken his hand in her words because I need some peace. Oh, wow. And it's really understanding what, and it's understanding what forgiveness is, is that forgiveness forgiveness lets you off the hook it doesn't let them off the hook you know they have to anyone who does anything has to live in the personal hell that they live in until they do something about it our personal work is our responsibility and so either this woman or any of us who've had horrible things done for us to us can pull those people along with us in our bitter bags for the rest of our lives and cause ourselves great inner stress and pain 
or we can let it go. It doesn't make it all right. It's not saying that bad things don't happen. It's not saying that life will be perfect. But you give yourself some peace when you understand that the forgiveness lets you off the hook. Not Absolutely. Yeah, and we're talking, you know, and like I say, it's, it's a very uh, sobering, you know, the story mm -hmm. really is. Uh, she's shaking the hands of the person who caused that injury, put her in that wheelchair. Incredible mm -hmm. story. Uh, on a light note, we are talking about guilty pleasures this morning, Jenny. <sighs> Uh, we're all hearing about these festive lattes and hot chocolates. They're you know, filled with sugar, sugar laden, up to 23 teaspoons of sugar. What's your guilty pleasure? What's your I don't care, it's Christmas food and your drink? Uh, well, I think now your cake, Trish. <laughs> That'll be it. I'm just taking it home. Oh, no, well, you can take it home. <laughs> I was going to use it as a doorstop, but you can take it home. It is yours. But what do you have? I mean, I love mince pies. Mince oh. pies are my guilty, guilty treasure. I think just eat, doing some eating and pretending it's not numbing me. That oh, would be good. <laughs> No, you're right. I need to stop eating. Numbing my feelings with food. Stop eating our feelings. <laughs> oh, Jenny, it's lovely to have you in. What are you up to today? Are you pushing off uh, Christmas present shopping or No, chilling? just working today. Just working today. Well, you've got a soothing voice, a lovely manner, and I always feel so positive when you come in. Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, still to come, in fact, link to Jenny, smiley bins. Could that be the answer to get us all recycling a bit better? Well, it's happened in Leeds, and it could be coming to Coventry and Warwick real soon. Take care, Jenny. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You'll be hearing about that story and plenty more here on Breakfast. <sighs>